Episode 113 New Designer for the Wedding Dress Ever since Natalie and Rita were chosen by Peter to be Ginny's bridesmaids, the two of them have been extremely excited. They took it upon themselves to be the wedding planners. Ginny helplessly looked at the two of them. She picked up her book and silently tried to avoid them. But before she could do so, she was approached by Rita. Ginny, your friends have been working so hard to arrange your wedding. You should watch the entire process. Otherwise, you wouldn't know how hard we've worked. You wouldn't treasure us in the future. Right, right. Natalie nodded in agreement as she stuffed a piece of cake into her mouth. Actually, a professional wedding team could take care of everything. You don't have to do it yourself. Ginny understood the effort that Natalie and Rita were putting into planning her wedding, and she was grateful for it. Sometimes, however, it was just a bit too much. They were too excited about it, and expected her input on every minute detail. Hey, how's your wedding dress? Natalie asked. Peter said he asked a start's chief designer, Tina, to design it, so we don't have to worry about that. What? Are you sure? I really didn't expect it to be Tina. A co-worker beside her exclaimed in surprise. The three of them looked at each other. Natalie quickly took out her phone and googled Tina's name. The search engine brought up scandalous stories about her in various tabloids. All of them were very recent. Oh no, this can't be true, right? Natalie quickly skimmed through the content of the articles. She was so surprised that her mouth was wide open. All of a sudden, the whole restaurant was in an uproar. News traveled fast, and soon everyone was talking about Astarte's chief designer. Ginny, what about your wedding dress? Natalie frowned. Even if the stories in the tabloids were false, Tina's career was probably over. A start wouldn't want to risk its reputation. She would almost certainly get fired. Don't put so much thought about what is written on the internet, Ginny commented. Have you forgotten what they used to write about me? Ginny recalled when she had been in a similar situation. So many bad things were written about her online by people she didn't even know. Eventually, though, Things went back to normal. But then again, Tina didn't have someone as powerful as Peter Dawson behind her back to help her clear her name. What about Jane? Didn't you say she was Tina's assistant? Rita frowned. She didn't know why, but she felt that Jane had something to do with this. But was that woman really that powerful? Ginny smiled. I forgot to mention that Jane's last name is no longer Stuart. She found her real family. She's a Lockhart. In fact, she's Director Lockhart's youngest daughter. When Ginny told her that, Rita couldn't believe what she just heard. That vicious woman is a Lockhart? Ginny glared at Rita. She really didn't know why Rita hated Jane so much. Don't call her that. She's my friend. Rita nodded. I heard that. Jane suddenly appeared in front of their table. Having heard what Rita had just said, she rolled her eyes in disgust and turned her head away. Jane, don't mind her. Rita didn't mean it. Ginny explained. Rita had just shrugged and sat beside Natalie. She looked at Ginny who was standing opposite her. It's all right, I'm used to it. Aren't you supposed to be at work this time of day? Why are you here? Ginny tried to change the topic. Every time Jane and Rita were in the same place, the two started arguing. They clearly couldn't stand each other. Something has happened to Tina. The company is in a bit of a mess right now but I've just received news that the dresses that Tina was commissioned to do have been transferred over to me. 
And I saw your wedding dress design as well. As Jane said that, she smirked. She was quite happy with the turn of events. Natalie, who was sitting across from her, looked surprised. Jane seemed very happy about Tina falling from grace. Thinking about it for a moment, she understood. If Tina, the chief designer, was no longer around, Jane had a shot at taking over her position. Could it be that Tina's scandal was somehow set up by Jane? She shuddered at the thought. Better not make an enemy of someone who would go to such lengths. Really? Then you'll design my wedding dress. Ginny smiled. She didn't want to show it, but all of a sudden, she had mixed feelings about this. Of course, I will design a beautiful wedding dress for you. Jane said as she looked at the information on the table. By the time Rita tried to cover it up, it was already too late. You guys are preparing for the wedding, ah. Ginny, I'm going to be your bridesmaid. No, you're not. Ginny already has two bridesmaids, Natalie and me. We were personally picked by Chairman Dawson himself. We do not welcome outsiders. Rita quickly put away the information on the table. She didn't know why, but she felt that she couldn't let Jane see it. A flash of anger appeared on Jane's face. Ginny kept saying that they were best friends, but she didn't even want her to be her bridesmaid. However, when she thought about how she had basically assumed her identity and stolen her family, her heart softened. She wanted to make it up to Ginny, so it was better not to care about such matters. All right, then I'll design a set of bridesmaids' dresses for the two of you. We're all friends of Ginny, so naturally, we're all hoping for her to be beautiful and have the perfect wedding. This surprised Rita a little. She had never seen Jane talk like that. In fact, Jane always held a grudge against everyone. What was going on today? Has she really changed? Ginny smiled and nodded. She gave Rita an accusatory look, which seemed to say, See? Jane isn't so bad after all. Ginny took all the wedding plans from Rita's hand and laid them down on the table for Jane to see.